Hello, and welcome to Wellness Shots with Jewel. Today, we are streaming live on Wednesdays and Fridays at noon PST time in my group, Plant Superpowers. If you're not a member yet, please join. Otherwise, you can uh, enjoy our interviews on my YouTube channel. Today, I have a great guest with us, Dr. Clapper. Welcome, Dr. Clapper. So That's nice great. to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Joe. It's good to be with you and your viewers. Thank you. Um, well, the main question right now is coronavirus, the pandemic. How are you and what do you have to say about this? Oh, my. <laughs> oh, is there a pandemic? I hadn't noticed. Uh, Good heavens, uh, whoever thought that our lives would be so upended and altered uh, by a microbe we can't even see. Uh, I'm fine, thank you for asking. Uh, my wife and I are hunkered down in our home here in uh, South Florida. Uh, the weather's been lovely. And uh, uh, we have uh, had it relatively easy and uh, we, uh, I've been able to use the time to catch up on everything from emails to taxes. And my wife is uh, fostering four little kittens for the Humane Society. So we've had lots of fun with uh, seeing little kittens grow up. Uh, so uh, we're doing fine. My heart aches uh, for all the people uh, who've had their paychecks uh, abruptly ended and don't know where next month's rent is coming from. And the, and the forces of stress are building up in our society. We can all feel them. And, so far, there's food in the stores, but I get very distressed at seeing the pictures of the farmers plowing the, the beans and the lettuce and back into the ground because the restaurants aren't open to buy them. And uh, the fear of looming food shortages hangs over all of us. So uh, these are stressful times, uh, no doubt. Um, it's... Uh, uh, there's lots of implications that we can talk about, of course, um, because ultimately these viruses jump out uh, from animal confinement operations, uh, which are rampant all over this uh, uh, this world. And it's this is this pandemics have been a special delivery telegram from the animals saying we are not your food. Stop eating us and. We can't hear their screams on the slaughterhouse floor, so they uh, reach right out, and uh, and and I see as the slaughterhouses shut down across the country, they, they say, "Well, you uh, you won't listen to our screams on the slaughterhouse floor. Well, we're just going to take those uh, processing people right off that line and send them home sick, and we're going to reach into your society and shut it down because you you could, your heart was was hardened to the message that we were trying to give you." And, you know, you, we can wax poetic about it, but it's a tragedy on every level from the animals to the people to, uh, uh, to our society. So strange and stressful times. Uh, so I hope uh, all your viewers are doing okay as, as well. Uh, yes, thank you. And I hear you. And I, I prepared some questions from, the, uh, from my um, list from people who, from my viewers. So the first question is best methods of preventing respiratory viral diseases. Sure. Um, first of all, uh, keep yourself strong and healthy. It sounds obvious, but realize that uh, the human body is no stranger to viruses. We are fully in, infiltrated with them. There's viruses in your mouth, in your GI tract, or rectum, vaginas, if you have one. There, we're, we're, we have. We're, we're, viruses all around us, but you've got a nice strong immune system with lymphocytes constantly going around and seeing these viruses, interrogating them, making antibodies against them, eliminating them. Well, you want to keep that system as healthy as you can. And so that requires back to basics, get enough sleep uh, for sure. Uh, when I don't get enough sleep, uh, my throat gets scratchy and I get viral infections. So sleep is very important. Keep yourself well hydrated, at least four big glasses of water a day. Uh, and it's not just for theory. The, when we're dehydrated, our secretions get thicker, our saliva gets thicker, the, the mucous membranes in our lungs get thicker, and, and that inhibits our ability to, to ward off the microbes. 
Don't interfere with your own immune system by eating too much sugars uh, and, uh, and oils. Uh, these are not your friend. They inhibit your lymphocytes from doing their job. And so this is the time for whole foods. We talk about that. Uh, talking about the store, I'm talking about eating real live uh, fruits and vegetables as opposed to everything out of uh, brightly colored packages and boxes that have been processed by the hand of man. So um, uh, rest, water, uh, healthy whole foods, really important. Obviously, minimizing your contact with other people who might have uh, the infection. And being considerate when you go out in public, uh, wear, your, wear your mask. Uh, it, it's important not to prevent you from inhaling viruses, but to prevent you from uh, putting your viruses out to others. It's a sign of compassion, of responsibility, uh, that, that you care about other people. And uh, uh, wear your gloves in the store, and when you come out, take them off and put them in the garbage. Don't throw them on the ground there. And all these uh, etiquettes, uh, every time I'm putting on a pair of surgical gloves that I've done so often in the past to do surgery, I never thought I would go buying groceries with, <laughs> with the bond. But uh, uh, this uh, situation is really, uh, that put some strange uh, twists in our lives. So uh, keep yourself healthy, keep your foods as strong as you can, and uh, stay away from others who might have it. And uh, this thing has a lifespan. We, we will get through this, and uh, hopefully by, this, by over the next few weeks and months, we'll see it all start fading away here. Uh, though it may make another appearance in the fall, we can talk about that. The most important thing is, uh, Again, as I say, I'm, I'm going to have a T-shirt made up. Your, your body's never not looking. You know that you can't fool it. Don't cheat on it. Give it give it what it needs in the way of sleep and rest and good food, and stay healthy. And if the, if the uh, fates are in your favor, you won't encounter this virus, and hopefully, uh, it won't be a problem for you. I got a few questions about vitamin C that, uh, and I'm going to read this. Like I heard that you have to be careful with vitamin C. Uh, or other things that make immune system too strong because of risks to lungs of COVID-19. Right. Um, the story of the, this virus and what it does in the body, I think is getting a little distorted as it comes through the media lens in that uh, there's, <clears throat> as the body marshals its immune forces to fight off invaders, uh, one thing that it does is uh, your immune cells release these molecules called cytokines uh, that call in uh, extra immune cells to help uh, uh, kill the cells that have been infected with the virus. Uh, well, we're now seeing there's something called a cytokine storm where this uh, mechanism gets way out of control and uh, the immune cells release huge amounts of this, uh, of these chemicals uh, that really uh, may be playing a role in the lung damage that we see. And uh, the media and, and folks uh, not scientifically uh, tuned in uh, say, oh, well, there's your immune system. Don't want to turn it up too high because it may release these too much cytokines. Uh, that's not... Uh, that's not normal immune function. That's immunopathology. That by the time that happens, uh, that's not a matter of taking too much vitamin C and tuning your immune system too high. Um, that's part of the disease that the, that the virus has created. Uh, and, uh, and the response that your body marshals up is a diseased response. Uh, I don't think uh, having sufficient vitamin C stores on board is going to exaggerate that. Uh, that that's already into the disease process. So um, uh, vitamin C is important for immunity. I wouldn't be taking handfuls of vitamin C tablets, uh, but I do have a navel orange every morning. And, uh, and I think uh, having citrus in your diet on a regular basis is probably a good idea. And, and I, I'd leave it at that, but I wouldn't be afraid of vitamin C per se uh, because of the fear of, of the cytokine storm. Uh, keep your immune system strong. And same thing goes with zinc and, and other uh, nutrients that can help play a role in immunity. Uh, you want to eat foods that have zinc in it, grains and legumes and root vegetables. But don't be taking handfuls of zinc tablets in the hope of warding off the evil spirits that way. But is it, are there any supplements in your view that we should, or we, maybe that we, uh, we should take during these times? Um, 
I don't take any additional supplements uh, in that way. Um, I take um, a multivitamin a few times a week, like I always do, and it has some zinc in it, it has some iodine for my thyroid, uh, but uh, I'm certainly not uh, going overboard on these particular supplements. Uh, my wife and I usually have a couple of Brazil nuts most mornings uh, for the selenium in them, uh, and that's uh, basically all we've been doing. But no, I, I haven't been taking or recommending any particular supplements for one's immune system. Well, you just said multivitamins. And my understanding was the multivitamins are actually uh, not as good as taking some vitamins that you really are low on. Like uh, my, my way is, and I would like to be corrected if I'm wrong, is to um, check the check your do a blood test, check if you are low on anything. And then if you are like on omega-3 or on D3, then you can take the supplement, but rather than taking multivitamins, take just that particular vitamins that you are low on. That's a very appropriate comment. And I'm so glad that you made that. And, and the uh, multivitamins you buy off the internet and get in the stores, uh, they're, they're balanced way too much in, in high doses. There's a whole big shotgun approach. Uh, and no, I do not recommend those or approve those. Uh, I don't know if we're here, here to endorse brands and that, but uh, the multivitamin I'm referring to is, is a very well-designed one uh, by Dr. Joel Furman. It's uh, Dr. Furman's Men's Daily. And the reason why I feel okay about taking him is that he gave some very intelligent thought. Uh, he pulled out all the heavy, uh, outrageous vitamin A's and beta carotenes and, and iron and all these things that cause some mischief, toned everything else way down there. But what he did leave in was 2,000 international of vitamin D, which I think is a reasonable thing to take every day. Uh, 200 micrograms of iodine for thyroid, I think that's reasonable. 15 milligrams of zinc for, for your immune system uh, and, uh, and some B12. And uh, I'd be taking those anyway. And so it, it only because it's Dr. Furman's vitamin that he really muted down uh, and made it a very appropriate formulation. That's the only one that I was referring to. But thank the you ones so I, much. I not recommend. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. This was great clarifying question. And thank you for your answer. I was just interviewing Dr. Furman on Wednesday. And we, but we didn't talk about his brand. So thank you so much again to um, pointing us to the, to the brand that he created. Uh, so um, my other question is um, vaccines. Are we going into uh, a mass vaccination? Is it possible? And if the vaccine will be created for the COVID-19, what is uh, what is your view on it? Is it like a flu shot, or is it different? It would probably be somewhat uh, different. I'll be glad to share my thoughts with you again. Uh, I know many of your viewers. As soon as you mention the V word as a vaccination, oh yeah, uh oh, he believes in vaccination. Write off anything he believes, he's saying. Uh, people are just opposed to the entire concept of vaccinations. Uh, and, uh, and if you're in that camp, uh, then, uh, then yeah, okay. I choose, I choose to stay open uh -huh. and uh, hear the views. And I think we all deserve to hear different views, different opinions mm -hmm. to, make, uh, to make an informed decision at the end. Fair enough. Um, well, I'm one, um, I've seen three cases of clinical tetanus in my life. Uh, it, it's no joke, it kills people. And so I certainly, I'm in favor of tetanus vaccinations and, uh, and other vaccinations that um, uh, seem to be relatively benign and have been proven over time not to have any adverse effects such as you know, the tetanus shots, et cetera. Uh, that said, uh, you know, vaccinations come with this entire baggage load uh, of history. They were from, made from animals and, in, uh, and there were virus contaminations in the polio virus and the monkey kidneys and yada. And people hear that and their eyes glaze over and they say, I don't want any of that stuff injected into me. Well, that's from the 1950s and 60s. Science has marched on in the last uh, 50 years. And uh, nowadays, 
Um, the vaccines are made uh, with, uh, without the, the animals being involved uh, in the production. Uh, the, uh, the RNA uh, uh, sequence is determined and uh, the computers make up the, 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 uh, the sequence of the, of the fragment of nucleic acid, whatever that would be uh, the part of the vaccine. Uh, and uh, that is what is injected. Uh, and see if it develops an antibody response that would protect us. If they come up with a, a virus, uh, with a vaccine made like that, that doesn't involve a zillion animals dying and a bunch of animal material in the actual vaccine, um, and, it, and it works, and it summons up an antibody response that protects people, it's hard to, uh, to, to think that this would be something that, uh, that I would not welcome myself and would recommend for my patients. So I'm waiting to see what uh, the reality of it is, but I'd ask people don't uh, be stuck in the past in your assessment of vaccinations. And their Thank you. So if you choose to uh, go for the vaccine, would you allow yourself some time to see how that vaccine really works? Because uh, the, uh, the fear out there is, I don't want to be the first one. I don't want to be a guinea pig. Oh yes, absolutely. And the, uh, the apparently they are already doing those tests. It's already they're doing the human trials now, uh, and uh, there are people who volunteered and have had the vaccines injected, and they're being watched uh, for any adverse effects, and they're having blood drawn to see does it, uh, does it create the antibodies that protect them. So uh, yes, those studies will already be done. No, I don't want to be the first one in that study. I did not volunteer uh, to be a human subject of that in those studies. I, I'm very grateful for those people who did. Thank you, thank you. So I'm just gonna read some other questions that uh, real people wrote and they have this question. Uh, one uh, person wrote, I struggle with SIBO and have tried to follow a plant-based diet but always seem to have trouble with raw food, beans and even juices. When I had tried a low carb diet, my symptoms would go away. Please help with guidance. I can't eat a lot of starches and I wish to follow a more higher protein plant-based diet, but struggle with these foods. Well, uh, we have to, if you're in that situation, you need to uh, uh, treat your, uh, as you treat your, your GI tract like, like an old 57 Chevy. You know, when, the, uh, when you're in an old car and you're at the stoplight and it turns green, you don't slam the accelerator to the floor. You know, accelerate gently. And the same thing, if there are foods that in the past have caused you uh, difficulty, then introduce them gradually. You can make up a, a lentil soup or lentil stew and just have a tablespoon or two. And that's all to start with. They just have a tablespoon to every night and give your microbiome time to, to, to uh, change so they're more adept at digesting the, uh, the fiber that comes from legumes, gives your liver enzymes time to gear up to, uh, to handle the, uh, the different types of protein that are coming up from the gut. Uh, if you add these foods in slowly uh, and the raw food, you can, you can throw them in a blender, make a blended salad and just have a couple of spoonfuls every, you know, at lunch and a couple of spoonfuls at dinner and take three or four weeks to slowly increase the amount of the foods in your diet. And if you do that, uh, most people have no problem uh, as the proportions of food changes in, in adopting a more plant-based diet. So there's no hurry uh, and take your time and give your body uh, the time it needs to change. Thank you. And um, I have to ask this question about the protein. Uh, someone, people are still asking about, uh, there is so much about the protein. So there is so much confusion out there on protein. So do we need a certain amount of protein? Do we need to track our protein in order to lose weight and keep our muscle strength? Okay, um, important question. Uh, the good news is relax. Uh, all plant foods, all whole plant foods, I'm not talking about granola bars and energy drinks here. I'm talking about you know, uh, whole grains and potatoes and, and, and lentils and beans and peas and nuts and seeds and uh, all whole plant foods have protein. And if you are eating enough uh, calories to, uh, in whole foods to keep your weight on, you're going to be getting 50, 60 grams of high-grade protein. It's in, it's in the beans and the grains and, and, the, and the breads and the pastas and the legumes and the stews and the soups. 
So it really isn't a worry. I, I've never written the diagnosis protein deficiency uh, on any, any medical chart that I've seen in, in the plant-based community. So it isn't an issue. Um, and the weight loss happens by yourself. Uh, a whole food plant-based diet is mostly made of fiber and water. And, uh, and that's the joy of it. It doesn't matter if you have a fourth bowl of vegetable soup, who cares? It's, it's just fiber and water. It doesn't stick to you. So, so the lean body is, is just a bonus that comes to you from nourishing your body on whole plant foods. And the proteins uh, will take care of them, them, themselves. But yeah, I would once a day uh, include a, an especially protein-rich uh, uh, meal uh, that usually has some legume in it, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils. So um, uh, uh, a couple of scoops of uh, bean chili, uh, a hummus sandwich, uh, a lentil stew. Uh, have, have the legumes should appear uh, you know, regularly in your diet. And if you do that and uh, the rest of the foods are whole plant foods, uh, the proteins will take care of yourself. You'll, you'll easily get 50, 60 grams of protein. It's more than enough uh, that anybody really needs. And do you really have to track those 50, 60 grams of protein? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're, again, the, the, you eat um, oatmeal and fruit with some uh, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds at breakfast, uh, and then uh, you have a hummus sandwich uh, at lunch. Uh, well, all that, all those proteins, by the time they get down to your, the end of your small intestine, they've mixed together. Uh, your body knows what to do with all those amino acids. Uh, uh, there, there's no need to track them. Your body's been very experienced at dealing with these sequential uh, uh, boluses of food that comes down. Uh, you don't have to overthink it. Just, just eat the food. Your body will take care of it. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the last question before we finish our interview, I just, uh, there was a question about gaining weight on a whole food plant-based nutrition plan. The person went through the E4 diabetes solution program and lost 25 pounds, went from 170 to 145. And, um, and now uh, the desire is to go back to 170 to 175 pounds. So they do want to gain weight on a whole f and stay on a whole food plant based. Is it possible? Well, the patient went from uh, uh, 175 down to 140 and then and now wants to get back to 170. I, I hope he's a big, tall guy uh, who wants to get back to 170 because uh, if this is a, a, a five foot six inch woman, she should not be shooting for 170 pounds. Uh, that said, uh, I do have, we can cut to the whole issue of, of the underweight vegan, the folks who want, who really want to gain some weight. Uh, and uh, here are the people who can uh, be luxurious in the more calorie dense food, the avocados and uh, nuts and seeds, etc. They should have a handful or two of walnuts every day. They should, uh, they can make up a nice weight gain smoothie for themselves and uh, throw some nut butters uh, into the blender uh, may, uh, for a while, a little bit of extra protein powder. Um, I suggest they go to the website of the vegan bodybuilders. Go to Robert Cheek's website and Derek Treesai's website and, and, uh, and uh, just type in vegan bodybuilders and go to their website and you'll see the, uh, the recommendations they make uh, for these meals that will really help uh, put on weight in a healthy manner. Um, and uh, they said, don't be using scoops of that protein powder they can be hard on the kidneys. We're talking about just a, a tablespoon of that a day. Uh, but uh, go to their website. You'll see uh, recipes for weight gain in a healthy manner. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Clapper. It was a pleasure to have you on this Wellness Shot with Jewel. And uh, for all our viewers, thank you for your support. And again, we uh, stream this live on Wednesdays and Fridays. Have a great day. Thank you. All the best to your viewers.